among the three running times that we have seen, the worst case, the average case, and the best case, our concern in this course is primarily going to be with the worst case running times. So the, the worst case times will be our main focus in this course. And the reason for that is, worst case running times provide us guarantees about the running time performance. The worst case running times tell us what is the worst that an algorithm can do. What is the worst that could happen in terms of the running time. So if you know what the worst case running time of an algorithm is, you have a guarantee, you have an assurance that the algorithm cannot perform worse than this guarantee. It cannot perform worse than the worst case running time. And such guarantees are often required. For example, if your algorithms are being used by some technological product where delays, you know, if, if they're being used in real time system where delays cannot be tolerated, then it, these guarantees are what matter most to you. Okay, so our goal is going to be to design algorithms which have good worst case performance. But one thing we should note is that the worst case input may not appear very frequently. It may actually be very rare to encounter a worst case input. So most of the time, the algorithm could perhaps work pretty fast on typical inputs. The performance of the algorithm on the average input may be in fact significantly better than the performance on the worst case input. But if you are interested in absolute guarantees, then no matter how rare the worst case input is, we will try to optimize the algorithm to have good worst case performance. But what you should remember is that the performance of an algorithm on average may be significantly better than the worst case performance. Now for the two algorithms that we have seen so far, the insertion sort algorithm and the selection sort algorithm, both the average case and the worst case performance were actually the same because both were theta of n squared. But later on, we are going to see another sorting algorithm called QuickSort, whose worst case performance is theta of n squared but whose average case performance is theta of n log n. So, on an average, quicksort runs pretty fast compared to insertion sort or selection sort. But in the worst case, it performs as badly as insertion sort and selection sort. So the performance of quick sort on typical inputs is usually pretty fast. It's significantly better than the performance on the worst case input. And we'll see that in detail in a future video. Now the average case perform the average case running time of an algorithm is a good predictor of the performance on a typical input. So if you know what the average case running time is, you can expect a typical run of the algorithm to take that long. But the problem is that it is mathematically a lot more tedious to compute the average case performance. And that's the reason why in this course, we are going to look at the average case performance of only some simple algorithms. We are not going to worry about the average case performance everywhere. Rather, we are going to focus on the worst case performance, assuming that 
what's important for us are those guarantees those performance guarantees which come along with the worst case running times as for the best case running time it's almost never going to be useful and you can see why if you recall how we optimized the selection sort algorithm to handle the special case of an input that is already sorted the selection sort algorithm is relatively slow compared to you know other sorting algorithms like quick sort and merge sort but if you make the algorithm handle the special case of a sorted array in the way we did in the previous video we ended up having a best case performance of theta of n for selection sort so but you know just because your algorithm can handle some can run pretty fast on a few special cases doesn't mean anything right because its worst case performance could be really pathetic its average case performance could be very pathetic but just because it run it ran fast on a on a few special case inputs it could end up having a very good best case time complexity so that's the reason why we are not going to focus on best case time times uh, at all because uh, they are not useful for us in some rare circumstances they may be useful for example let's say there is an algorithm a1 that you work really hard to come up with and let's say it has theta of n square worst case performance worst case running time now let's say somebody else comes up with a simple algorithm a2 which solves the same problem but because the best case time is usually pretty simple to compute you run a quick calculation on what the best case running time is and you end up with a value of theta of n cube now you know that even without bothering to compute the average case or the worst case time complexity you can be pretty sure that you are not going to be using a2 because you already have an algorithm a1 which runs in time theta of n square in the worst case so the average case is definitely going to be better than theta of n square and the best case is definitely going to be better than theta of n square so you have a guarantee that the algorithm will not perform any worse than theta of n square but in this case the best that this algorithm can perform is theta of n cube so you don't even need to bother trying to compute what the average case analysis is going to yield or what the worst case time is you can straight away reject this algorithm a2 so in some cases if you know what the best case time complexity or for of a bad algorithm is you can uh, use that to simply discard those bad algorithms in some other cases it is possible that best case times may give you some indication of which algorithm to actually use for example if you recall how insertion sort works if you have an input that is perfectly sorted you know that insertion sort is going to run pretty fast it's going to take time theta of n now what if you have an input that is almost sorted in other words maybe there are just two or three elements in the array in the input array which are out of place but pretty much all other elements are you know pretty much the rest of the array is uh, sorted so it's an almost sorted array well if, if sometimes the best case times may give you an indication of which algorithm to go for because um uh, if you have an almost sorted array 
the degradation in performance of insertion salt is not going to be significant relative to what the best case performance was because it's only on those two or three elements that the algorithm is going to require to do more work than the best case but in some other algorithms like the unoptimized version of selection sort it doesn't matter whether the array is almost sorted or completely sorted or reverse sorted or random the running time of selection sort is going to be theta n squared so in this case if you know that your input array is going to be almost sorted you may prefer to use insertion sort over selection sort and that is something which you can decide by looking at the best case performance of insertion sort and comparing it to the best case performance of the unoptimized version of the selection sort algorithm but apart from these rare circumstances best case times are usually not useful and it's very easy to you know for somebody to cheat by uh, advertising their algorithm as running uh, really fast in the best case but the in reality the algorithm could perform very badly on typical inputs or in the worst case because it's always it's pretty easy to optimize the algorithm to handle those special cases really well and that's the reason why best case times are usually considered not useful or just bogus now coming to just the worst case and the average case times here's one scenario that you may find yourself in suppose there are two algorithms a1 and a2 that solve the same computational problem now let's assume that the worst case time complexity of both a1 and a2 well the worst case time let's assume that the worst case time complexity of a1 is very good and the worst case time complexity of a2 is very bad but if you look at the average case performance A1 has a good average case performance and A2 has a very good average case performance. So if you're looking at the average case performance, A2 is better. But if you look at the worst case performance, A1 is better. So which of these two algorithms are you going to prefer are you going to prefer a1 or are you going to prefer a2 now clearly the answer to this question is going to depend on what is more important for you what is more important for your application for which you know which is going to employ the algorithm is it more important for you to have a performance guarantee or is it more important for you to run fast on a typical input even if in the worst case if you encounter by any chance a worst case input your algorithm may simply you know chug chug forever not literally forever it may take such a very long time that you know for practical purposes it may be useless to uh, try and wait till the algorithm terminates so depending on whether the performance guarantee is more important or whether doing well on average on a typical input is more important you will prefer a1 or a2 for example for sorting algorithms if if, it, if you just need to run fast on average inputs uh, you know quick sort may be preferable over insertion sort or selection sort even though in the worst case the performance of quick sort is also theta of n squared just as the performance of selection sort or insertion sort is 
Now, another complication could arise from the fact that in many cases, trying to implement an algorithm that performs really well in the worst case may be difficult. It may be, in terms of programmer productivity, it may take a lot more effort to implement an algorithm that has a really great worst case performance. And conversely, it may be easier, it, it may be pretty easy to implement an algorithm that performs really well on an average. So, A2 may be much easier to code than A1, even though A1 runs, you know, uh, it offers better performance guarantees. But A2 offers better average case running times. So again, if programmer productivity is something that uh, is important for you, it's important to just get something working, it, it doesn't have to, uh, of, you know, maybe you're not that concerned about those rare worst case inputs which may um, end up taking forever. Maybe you're just concerned about doing Doing, you know, doing well on average and just implementing the algorithm and getting the system to work fast. So if you value programmer productivity, if you value, um, you know, average case running times, if you value the performance of the algorithm on a typical input, you may end up preferring A2, even though its worst case performance may be uh, worse than that of A1, even though A1 may have a better worst case performance, you may still prefer A2.